if you do not pay attention to this video and the idea that I'm going to share with you about trademark infringement in your business, you absolutely are risking every minute, every dollar, everything that you've put in. So let's get right to talking about how to avoid trademark infringement in your business. I always like to start with a trigger. So if you are naming your business, if you are naming a new program, naming your membership, buying up uh, domain names, grabbing social media handles, anything that you are choosing to use as a brand identifier, that is the trigger that you need to pay attention to this video now. Okay, if you've been around in my world for any amount of time, you know I am the queen of metaphors. That I make them easy to remember and avoiding trademark infringement is going to be my legendary four-part system. All made up of S's because you know, you gotta do it that way. But more importantly, it is going to show you how to think like a lawyer when it comes to your branding. So the first is sir silence keeping your mouth shut, search, we see what's going on, secure, and shout. I'm gonna walk you through each of the different pieces and highlight exactly what you need to know for the decisions that you are making now. Okay, to get you thinking about the first step, which is silence, I want you to just think for a minute. In the past week, how many fellow entrepreneurs have you seen asking for advice about domain names, sharing what they should name their course, asking for input on what they should call their membership, anything along those lines. Let me know in the comments below. I did track last week and I will tell you how many instances I saw. Okay, so silence is the first step and this is incredibly important because when you have a brand new idea, when you're excited about something, the first thing you wanna do, I know it, I get it, I'm one of you, is ask for opinions or ask for insight or you've taken a webinar and someone says, you should ask your people. No, 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 no. Not when it comes to branding your idea, protecting it, giving yourself the chance to protect your idea. It is not worth it. Stay silent. Do not ask for advice or opinions from people that you have known for an entrepreneurial nanosecond in a group with 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, I don't know, thousand of your closest friends. Do not do it. Keep your mouth completely silent. Okay, so this is the part where you are searching, you are looking for breadcrumbs. Now, there are a variety of ways that you can search. Ultimately, the controlling database is that run by the government of the jurisdiction where you're registering your trademark. For those of us in the States, it is the USPTO, which is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Now, this is not the first place that I recommend a regular old person starting to search. The website has gotten better, the instructions have gotten better, but it's still eh, not my number one place to go. My number one place, like most things, start with a simple Google search. Now again, we're keeping our mouth from step one. We might be sharing it with people that are closely connected with us. That's totally fine. Trusted environments, trusted people, that is okay. I'm talking about the loud and, you know, all over social media stuff. Eh -eh, don't do it. As you are searching, though, you are going to be silently crawling around social media, looking for instances of people that have the name or the idea that you're looking for. Now, when you're doing this, you need to be armed with all of the names that are similar, slightly connected, could be a different thesaurus word, 
And this is incredibly important because you can't just look for the exact name. You need to know what are similar words, what are basically the thesaurus words. Now, as you're doing the search, as you're going through avoiding infringement and all of that kind of stuff, you are welcome to scan the code for this video to unlock the bonus resources, which I have been making and talking about trademarks for decades at this point. So I know how important it is to search and more importantly to know where are we searching? Like not just blanket, go search because oh my goodness, where in the world do you start? But you need to be doing very specific searches in very specific locations. The searching, while I said yes, ultimately the government for the jurisdiction where you're trying to register is the controlling decision. They are part of what I like to call the legal Bermuda Triangle because even if in, and I should tell you the names of the points of the triangle. So at the top is practical on one of the corners is social and on the other corner is legal. So this is the tensions of the legal Bermuda Triangle that we're all working against because if I can get the name and let's say I got the legal trademark and I got this amazing brand and this amazing name, but practically speaking, I can't have the domain, I can't have the social media handle, I can't, um, it's too similar to somebody else's thing. Even though I got the pure legal part, my search would have uncovered and possibly sent me in a different direction. So part number two of avoiding infringement is doing effective searches and knowing how to do an effective search that is not just the legal end of life, but is the practical and the social parts that our business is our living and breathing and walking around with on a daily basis. Okay, we've gotten step one out of the way. We are keeping our mouth shut. We are being silent. Step two, we have searched. We have a somewhat of a breadcrumb trail to follow. Part three, we take that breadcrumb trail and we decide, do I need to secure legal registration for this? Now, in the United States, trademarks are a lot like children. Again, queen of metaphors. I'll use them all the time. They're not easy to forget. We can recall them when we need them. Trademarks, very few of us want to have the same instance of 19 kids and counting. That's a lot of kids to keep track of. So when you think about, okay, the brand that I'm building this around, that I'm taking steps to legally secure because you have to take care of this. It is a brand it requires enforcement. Infringement is not just committing infringement. We also want to make sure that people aren't infringing on our brands and our brand identifiers. So when you decide, yes, I need to take steps to legally secure this trademark, that is when you are filing the applications. Now, trademarks currently in 2023 are still governed by the jurisdictions of the governments that administer them. There is not a worldwide global trademark, does not exist. So what you want to do is make sure that you are securing your trademark in the market that you are mainly occupying. For the majority of you, this will be in the United States. A lot of you have customers here. Many of you are like myself. I'm a, I op, I'm a U.S. citizen. My business is registered in the U.S. My market is definitely global, but my trademarks always for myself start by securing them in the States. So you need to know where do you need to secure it and very often, again, painting broad strokes here, once you have a U.S. designated trademark, it often is fairly easy in comparison to then go get trademarks in other jurisdictions, in Canada, in the United Kingdom, in Australia. Those would be top of mind examples that I would give you. So securing means getting legal registration. 
it is not 100% that 100% of you need a legal trademark. There is a point when you are going through this process of avoiding trademark infringement that, yes, I can choose a name that will ultimately be my Under Armour, my Coke, my Pepsi, my Nike swoosh, my Apple. It can become that brand identifier. I can also choose to go down a path that is a generic or a descriptive name that I can't secure. But guess what? Nobody else can either. So in when you're in the secure phase, know that this is when you are moving into trademark applications. When you are searching the database from step number two, what you find are the people that have secured their registration or abandoned their application. Those results are also there. So that is step number three, which is Do you need to secure? If yes, file an application. If no, keep moving on your merry way. As you're watching, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I will gladly answer you. This is a hot topic. It has remained a hot topic for many, many, many years. I think it will always stay top of mind. And it's an area that people have lots of questions about in terms of, well, I have the hat, I'm using the hashtag. That means I have the trademark. No, it doesn't. Well, I have the domain. That means I have the trademark. No, it doesn't. So if you have questions, please add them in the comments. I will answer you and get you on the right track that will allow you to keep moving and avoid committing infringement. Finally, the final phase of the four part system that you should never forget S4, how to brand like a lawyer is sharing. Okay. Now that you've kept your mouth shut while you were working on your idea, you searched to make sure that you could move forward with it. You saved yourself investing extra time, money, and effort by, oh, this is a great idea. Oh, I'm going to go with it. Oh, I'm going to hire the designer. Oh, crap. I now have to rip out every instance of it and pay some fines. Not so much fun. And you have conclusively determined, yes, you need to file the application, at which point you've done that, or you have a name that you can't register, but guess what? Nobody else can. So you don't need to get a trademark for the thing that you're working on. Now, that is when sharing comes into play. Now, you're standing on solid, like you're solid. You're not in mushy quicksand. You're not... Yeah, I kind of sort of think I can use this name, but I'm kind of sort of not 100% sure. You can use it. Guess what? You can share it. You can shout it from the rooftops. You can do all the crazy things that you want to do with this brand because you followed the infrastructure to get you to that point or the decision tree to get you to that point. So thank you for watching. I'd love to see you on the next video. And again, if you want to unlock any of the resources, the checklists, the guides that I have that accompany this video, just scan the code or click the link in the description.